But not bounce off them. <laughs> Love SCD is vulnerable. It is the greatest level in the world. If anyone wondering, if I do just clip the video to the, this attempt, which hopefully is successful, basically I I'm had to pop off for a bit because my housemate got sent here to check if he's okay. It's quiet there at work, so he just got sent home early. And uh, and now I'm. And then me and SCDA Spongebob just don't get along. So you want to wait till that's preferably going from right to left. These always go yellow, blue. And then this fan blade, you want to go in between the fan blades. I've said this multiple times, because there's been multiple takes because of this. But it's like that. Now for this, it always goes yellow, blue, Red on the uh, on the cycle, so red. So it'll be yellow, blue, red. And then here from this madness token, you could just fly off the edge and hit that token. So uh, that sets the days one was much harder than it's much easier than it out to be. But uh, so now. We're, we're back in SCD-80, level that I love so much. We want to stack these three melons on top of each other. And you'll go up here. Now, there's a Merv go pop out. I suggest for your sanity's sake, you pick up one of these guys. And try and hit him with it. Now sadly those uh, spinners it turns out don't don't give up. Also you come here, this is now a checkpoint. Uh, there's probably a checkpoint down there but you don't know what or at least I don't. So hit these and then we'll just go ahead to hit take out another TV. And we just want cartwheel because cartwheel is quicker. So we now do 3 meter items. If you watched Chris's advanced tutorial, there is something called 3 meter skip. Uh, but we're not doing that today. This is for beginners and people just want to look at, to get into the game. So it's a very simple premise. Um, up 3 meters high, because you have to remember Spongebob and Co are tiny, is a Goofy Guru token. And we have to go through with this toxic wasteland, hitting buttons to bring up such things as soda cans and, I should say, drinks cans and jars. So you just want cartwheel. Now let, I think mean, when we hit our next button we will start getting spitters, which make this challenge quite interesting. And by interesting I mean quite horrible. So spitters, I stand to one side while bodies are popping up, and then run to the other. So I want to stand to the opposite side. So you just want cartwheel constantly because it makes you move quick and then once again sadly these guys are spawning. Now if you really are cheeky you can try going for a cartwheel across some of these but um, if the spitters hit you and you die. Oh my god that was a save. If the sp spitters hit you and you die uh, you will just have to go back to the beginning of 3 meter island and it's not fun. However, we do get revenge on that guy there. There you go. Just had to move. And that's 3 meter island. Um, what 3 meter skip does for us is... Um, it, 3 meter skip consists of doing one frame jumps, like so though a lot better because I haven't practiced my one frames in a while up here so that's three me to skip in a nutshell but again watch Chris's tutorial for that you can jump into that guy to deal damage get lasered by the move thank you for a good luck Mannix 
Mm. So you get if you die there, uh, you actually get spawned to the bottom here. So what you need to do, you need to walk back to Free Meter Island, and they'll put you back to the top. Because Mervs in this game are fantastic enemies. He's now far oh, enough away. I'll get hit once. So here, they want you to sort of do this in two parts. You just charge up a throw, you can hit this TV. So we're now getting to the hardest floating block challenge, one that I, when I was in my mid two hour times, um, I constantly lost runs to. We will get over there. As you can see, there's a lot of spikes and a lot of pain. Pain, no pain, no gain, as it appears. So for this, you just generally want to take a bit of a safe route. Um, I can't really give that much advice for this, just don't die. So, oh, as you can see, I'm being a bit risky. You, if you get to this little four block over here, you're generally a bit safe because you can predict when they were going to turn and now we're just onto here. I do like the design of this um, bone block, I just wish it wasn't so horrible. So you, with these blocks here, you want to double jump just as they're moving so you don't get accidentally spiked in the middle of the air. But as you can see, almost everything has a spike on it. They, they really were not messing around with this. Just like walking on ice cream. So now we're just up to this end bit. This is one of the best performances I've ever had. Ooh. Sometimes what you saw can happen is you'll get spiked and still get the trampoline off. Don't ask me how that happens. That was a completely terrible floating block challenge. So I, I'm trying to explain now in the little few seconds I have. You generally want to try and on that little bit start falling down when the spikes start turning away from you. I couldn't because I didn't want to die. And then we hit this for loads of points. But you don't want to get hit. Now, this is just me. Taking, I like taking out this Merv because I hate the Merv. And then, let me see, I don't like you, Spitter. That's just like a bit of a safety tactic. Now, if you watch Chris's advanced tutorial once again, there's a slightly different way you do this, but I just missed that completely. So now we've got to wait for a new enemy to spawn. Basically, you can jump on there and then jump on the button and jump over, but I haven't practiced that in a while and it's a bit hard to get grasp off, so you just want to stun this enemy and then throw him and hit that button. And that should get some nasty little cans out. Now, here, four enemies will burst out to us. We just stun them, walk over here, charge up. Yep. Uh, yeah, taking the time to charge one up, hit stuff. Oop. Yeah, it's... There you go. Ah. That's annoying. So, because I angled it wrong, I hit the chum bucket machine instead of that, so... Uh, there's still Merv over there. We don't care. Now, little trick at the end here. Can't remember who found it. I think it was either Hidia or Jared. If you just bounce on this first one here and fully charge up the melon, you will actually just hit that from max range. You don't have to, like, bounce long and then charge it. And that is SCDA. Um, yeah, it's not. I personally don't like it as a level, but that's me. We now get to the second boss of the game, Dennis. Uh, you just have to pick up and throw, throw these men at him. I This is where the infamous saying for me, go quick to go fast, comes from. Because if I try and go too fast, I end up playing myself. 
so if you want you can charge up hits, they don't do any more damage, but uh... Okay, the melons are not spawning, because it got stuck on the platform, that's hilarious. And the issue is enemies can hit you when you try to charge up, so that's why I suggest against charging up. There's a quick method where you can do where if you hit Dennis in one of his transitionary phases while he's hopping between you, if you throw the melon to where he's going to, um, he will take double damage, but uh, we don't care. We're just going to throw that enemy at him. And that's name's Dennis. Let me just quickly... So next up is Sunday Driving. Sunday Driving is a completely unique level to this game. I really love the aesthetics of aesthetics. I love the design of it. Basically, we're not going to let this peanut get away from us. Uh, the aim of the level is to stay within a certain distance of him and don't let him get away. But, the aim, but in this level, we're going to do a trick called Reasonably Paced Goob. It's kind of like Fast Goob, but it's not. Uh, it's called Fast Goob, I'm just joking about because on the second lap, we are going to despawn Goob by going very far ahead of him. Uh, this allows us to skip the little water thing at the end and have a bit of time and uh, skip a bit of the track for some time save. And it's but it's called Reasonably Paced Goob, I call it as a joke. Because on it's easy on Xbox. On GameCube there's a trick called Fast Goob where we reverse at the beginning, but um, it's a lot easier on GameCube than it is on Xbox. Now I'm pretty sure I learnt this trick off Jaxa, so thank you to him. This first part is just me gathering some nitros. Excuse me, I'm just have I've ha I'm having some tea, you see. You can still see there's a plenty of the game to go to the end. So this bit here... <clears throat> Do I sound okay? Oh, Yeah, sometimes you would just fly into those twice. Uh, you can turbo across this sand here to save a bit of time. And also dodge those. Collect that to be safe. And now it's the second lap. The second lap is where we're going to despawn goo. So you can just turbo across there if, if that didn't make sense. And yeah, it, it, it's not fun this level. Turbo across this sand to be, because turbo in straight lines is quick. This level has a lot of stuff that will knock you off, destroy any momentum you have, and call you Shirley. Well, Shirley, you're joking. That's a very poor airplane reference, I apologise. So coming up in... Oh yeah, you can only have 10 nitros max by the way, so I'm going to waste a couple. So coming up through here, we are despawn goob. A very actually quite simple way. On this shortcut, we just go turbo through it. And we can only do this on um, lap 2 onwards. Leave me, I've tried doing it on lap one. You get to around here, it says Goopy Goopers got away. So we have now despawned the Goob. All the triggers for the level will still go off as normal, but we now don't have annoying Goofy Goopa. So now we're going to do the other part of reasonably, reasonably paced goob, which involves collecting this nitro on the last lap, turbo across this bit here, and then we're going to turn the turbo on the grass to my left on the hill, and that will allow us to get out of defense. So we're going to go like this, and that allows us just to cut out a ma that massive portion that we did in the first lap. And we pop out here, turbo. Let this nitro for good luck. And because we have successfully done these reasonably paced goob, we can, you know, move on with our lives. But yeah, this is a very easy trick that will save you about 30 seconds, 40 seconds, we'll say, because it also means we don't have to do that section there. And 
it's hmm that water park is very interesting if you get my drift just gonna let that green ball fly past and we are going finish level now when i first tried to record this tutorial i accidentally died at the end and got trapped in here forever so we now are done with Sunday Drive. We're never going to see this level again. It gives us some like stuff about oh, is it, it was all a dream? This is... Now we're now we're going to set to rub rub dub slip side tub. We got hit several faucets, <laughs> uh, which we're going to do in a specific. And these faucets will open various areas and make our lives generally easier. This isn't the quickest method I'm going to be doing, and the world record holder and I think top the top runners or quite a few of them do on the guest revisits, which you can see are quite soon. Some called guest jumps, which are frame perfect jumps, um, and it allows us to cut our most level. We're not going to be doing that because I'm not going. To I'm not going for three perfect jumps, don't tell anyone. So, final faucet is here. Uh, this isn't the quickest route, but it's very safe. We're going to take a little shortcut. We're going to go here, and the developers even showed a shortcut. I'm going to get it down and hop over onto this bit here. And that just uh, that saves us from doing another lap. Now, preferably I wanted to be on 1 HP here, but there is a backup method because we're going to um, Death Warp. To, so we can do a specific order. So I'm going to get hit by this. Then I'm going to go, go on that, go on the red wire for a bit and go into the water. Now on the red wire, this is where we want to be because it allows us to do this in a specific order. So I'm going to hop, hop onto the yellow wire. I almost forgot what order to do this in. We're going to do yellow, orange, blue, red. So you can see yellow targets coming up ahead. So this will we will hit these targets because they're going to knock down some lamps for us. And then you can jump off after hitting that target or if you're feeling safe, not if you don't feel lucky, punk, you can just uh, wait till there. So yellow, orange, blue, red. <laughs> so we're just coming along the orange wire. Then we hop over to this blue. I wish this place had something to read. Use the camera to help turn. And then if you want you can sort of turn and jump off that, or you can just wait till we're here. And you can hit the final thing to drop them. We don't know why those targets are there, or why these wires are even like this. What are they sus suspended by? Why is this place still open when all the lamps are knocked down? Who knows? Not me. But yes, this is Google Eyes and Smelly Knickknacks or Gesk. Uh, there is a quicker route you can do for the first one that doesn't involve Gesk jumps, but I'm just showing you guys the general route you should take. Because for quite a few new players it can be a bit confusing uh, which wires do I go which ones leak which yep I just have a nice sip of my tea <sighs> good brood copper we're now coming to another boss fight because you know boss fights this is Dennis Strikes Back it requires us to use the sponge bowl now there's something you can do called fast Dennis where it works the same as as you can see as Dennis 1. If you hit him while he's transitioning, you can deal double damage, so that was fast Dennis. It's very easy. I'm going to pause and just explain it for a second because at the end of this you have a bit of time to pause. The way it works is when he's transitioning, it's kind of like how Dennis, the fast Dennis 1 works. If you throw a, bo a bowling sponge bowl to where he's going to, it deals double damage, and that allows us to do a quick cycle on him, like I did there. It, and this one is a lot easier to set up on because uh, 
he's sort of pulling his how do I put this his collar so you can sort of see that and that means start charging up your sponge ball and throw it so I did that really quickly I just didn't want to die so we need 37 tokens uh, we need 40 tokens to do Anctopolis so we now have to do revisits first one we're going to do is rub dub a slip slide in the tub money so this is exact same as the Savage Drive 101 revisits if you remember them all that time ago now when I first did rub dub slip slide in the tub I mentioned a trick called dumb jump I'm not going to be doing that in this tutorial because Manix05 has a has its own very good tutorial on it. It saves you about 30 seconds a pop if done successfully. So if you want to do it, be my guest, be my guest, see my multicolored vests. Um, but I won't be showing you this tutorial. You can just watch his tutorial or Chris's tutorial. So instead we're just going to use this inbuilt shortcut. Yep, Rick and Morty references about, you know, a good decade before Rick and Morty was even conceived. Oh yes, there's new Rick and Morty today, I should probably watch that soon. I must finish this tutorial first so I can then stream some more heart gold because I want to finish this before I did more heart gold or silver because I enjoy playing that game casually. But I don't want to leave the job half done. Why should I half ass job when I can just full ass it? So if we did done jump, it would, we'd be going from that plat from that area to the left and we'd be hopping over the, the entire chasm to just where these boxes are. And again, Manix has a fantastic little tutorial on it. Yes, I'm sorry for not streaming recently. I went I went to uh my fa I had to visit my family in London. Nothing like serious as a birthday party. Well, uh, family's family, so... And then had a five hour train journey back. Should have been a two hour train journey. So yes, uh, once again we're going to be doing that trick that I showed you in Rub Dub 1. Which is go left, to right, double jump, and... There you go. That last jump was uh, frame perfect. And you can see because I lost all momentum, and that's what I'm trying to do whenever I hop, hop up on there. So, we're now just going to be going to the end of the level. The ring, it, you're just going to see this route that I do twice. Yep. And then we have to do the ring challenge after this. Now, this is. If you watch the world record, um, you will actually see they do a different route, but I ain't world record holder, I don't even do that route yet. So this is a 247. We're, very, we're actually very close to the end of the game. The game, I'd argue, really speeds up after Chelsea did ahead. That's just like the massive middle bit that I hate. But now it's time for the ring challenge. This ring challenge, well now you want is surprisingly hard. At least as a kid it was. Like over a decade ago. Yeah, for this game. Um if you go on speedrun.com slash TSSM, the world record is one hour thirty two minutes. If you if you're looking for Battle for Bikini Bottom, which was run at AGDQ last year or this year? No this year. Um that also has a world record of 57 minutes and 36 seconds. So with this wing challenge, it tries to throw you off by making you go that. And believe me, as a small child, aged 9, it did throw. But yeah, we managed to complete this game in like half hours. My hour was hour 50, so... But, yeah, no, it's actually quite a um, No, I'm not, I'm certainly right now not good enough for the world record. I'm going to see if I can get my top time to be top 10 again. If you look in the description, I actually have my PB down there. But 
of these rings that make our zigzag left and right. And for anyone watching this VOD, um, I'm trying to be Jack, so. Exactly. Right. Don't worry, once we get this nine or so minute segment done, we'll then have a four minute segment, at least that's a bit of fun. And I can re-explain a fake ring. The one nice thing about the ring challenge is it does make you appreciate the little tips and tricks we skip most of the level. So we can't do that skip that I showed you before. We have to go the long way round. Yeah, my time isn't that good. But yeah, we do an interesting we do interesting with this. Thankfully this is not Superman 64 though. So you saw like that jump skips out the entire just little boom. And because it's ring change, there are no checkpoints. If we die, we die. And go back to the game. Don't die for real, because this is a children's game. God, can you imagine how brutal that And they really I mean I'm just I'm trying to chat, I'm trying to be informative, it's just the going through wick rings. Um, interesting thing, you do a uh, dumb jump and rub them one, you can't actually do a ring change because the ring change doesn't, one of the rings doesn't spawn so you instantly fail, so that's why the Wild Record route is different to the route here. So now I'll just go on to the Macho Time Challenge. And it's exact same as the standard time challenge. I should get a 247. If I'm quick, I should get a 245. But you can still see that's still like 20 or so seconds. Like we didn't have that little trick or we didn't have dumb jump. I think casually this would be hard. Turning over here. Hop over. Oh. Don't know what happened there. Axane looked off to the side and lost all momentum. But yeah, this is the revisit portion of the game to get 40 tokens altogether. We, we get 41. We need, we need them. Is the auto balancing okay or...? Because I, I don't know, I don't have this playing back to myself. That would make me go crazy hearing my own voice. I don't know how you guys put up. Oh yeah, man, these points are basically just now. But uh, I still collect them because there's a couple of safety strats we can do. Did Mickey bother to tell us if the train is still running around here? And coming up to the little turn we do again. It's only no frame perfect, so this is probably going to be 250. And we're just, we're trying to get there slowly but surely. And then on guesk, I'm going to show you, without guesk jumps, the little quick way to do it. Because you should, it's only about one and a half minutes for the time challenges. Which is why they're some of the less repainful visits. I did say repainful, less painful revisits. And even with the guest jumps, they're quite fun to watch. We call them guests because Google eyes and smelly nicknames. Good, can you imagine saying that each time I guess? 
Yeah, this was a pretty poor uh, wrapped up slip on top two for me. Yeah, we basically. That's how many splits are to the end of the game. So after that, pause, and then we come back down to Google Eyes and Switch. Mmm, nice cup, nice of the cup of tea. So for this, all the forces turn so it says get to the end as quickly as possible. The way we facilitate this, side here, and this is a bit similar to the route that I showed you guys. So we get hit by that TNT, ACDC, I had to, I'm sorry. So we're going to go along this yellow hose, and we're going to use that, a nice little death warp, but we'll go do it quicker this time. So, I'm on 2 HP. I'm going to hit this to be on 1 HP. Hop across the uh, poses again, because it's actually really easy once you learn it. And you just imagine how the hell did we used to do this? So, and now we're going to get killed by this TNT. It's quick death. So if you do everything the way I do it, and the way that various people who don't do guest jumps do it, you should get around a 123 one. I might get a 125 and 126 just because I'm bad. But yeah, this is guest, it's literally skip a bit of the thing bit, death warp, oh look, we can make it. And no hands on the controller. So yeah, you should get 124, 125. I lost a bit of momentum hitting TNT, I think that's what uh, saved me from, but lost me from getting that. Now for the ring challenge, this ring challenge is infamous for something called fake ring. Fake ring I mentioned earlier, it's when you go for the ring and it does not register. It's happened to most runners at the and it's just painful. At least it means we get to see Gesk. You know, this it's actually a nice level. Well it's not nice, but I like I like it. We're going to go up here and rather than take on jump off the edge, we have to go through here. Now, what happened actually Christmas 2016 I was streaming this game because I was at home and uh, going for a PB. Um, it, I end up not getting a PB by like two seconds. No, it was a terrible run. Was I was chatting about fake ring here, and it happened. And it, I was like, well, I shit talk the game, but I get slapped, so I'll play a game. So, we don't stay on the orange wire for long. One likes to think this is a route they, they wish to play as with. So, here. Uh, you have to jump off the side here, and that's a route that you can do after hitting the sign to hit the sign, the, the little target. After hitting the red blue target, to hit the red target. English is failing me. So coming up in this area uh, is fake ring. The way we say you can try and prevent fake ring is by going solidly through the center of. The so. This ring coming up is what is sometimes a fake ring. But no fake ring, I think. That last one always makes me panic because it just sort of disappears and then, yes, we did. So no fake ring, thankfully. Oh, oh. Imagine getting fake ring in a tutorial. That would just be depressing. So now we have the macho time challenge. Because we are men, macho, and you could see, you know, casually it might be a bit hard, but we're men, we can do this. And we should, I think, have two upgrade points. For the rest of this game, we're basically going to be using SpongeBob, but uh, one revisit with one token as Patrick. We do a couple of tokens as Patrick, but the rest of this game is very SpongeBob centric. So now we're just going to hit these, and once again, hop across here. It 
toy that I can't explain that best. It's literally you try and angle yourself to that first box and um, double jump. And the game will try and turn you, but if you jump, you'll continue to take your momentum. F walk, by the way. And you'll be able to make it, and that skips doing a little loop. And then we hop up on these lamps. Hop over. And onto the final wild. This should be a 125. Again, if you watch the world record, I'm pretty sure it has guest jumps, and they are wonderful. They're very hard, and I'm not, I'm not saying they're easy at all, but they look really fun. And that's uh, Gesk 2. You can see we're, we're only a few splits from the end of this tutorial. We've only got 11 tokens left to collect. So after this, we're going to pause, go down to, and we're going to go to Planktopolis. So yeah, and Dennis 2, you can, Dennis Strikes Back, or Dennis 2 as we call it. You can pause after getting the token and warp, so that saves us from getting this. Now, we have the Sonic Wave guitar, a bit too late in the game, but we now have it. How many points do I have? So I have two more points. These are safety upgrades. I've got to upgrade my health once. And I've got to upgrade Karate Spin for a final boss. I'll explain why I'm doing this in a bit. So I upgrade the health because this has the hardest bungee challenge. And you do need a lot. It's nice to have that for health on your challenge. And then we upgrade the spin. Because with upgraded karate spin, we can ouch. We can uh, reflect projectiles, which is very useful for the spitters on the final boss. So the bungee challenge is now open to play. You can see there's lasers. I think was that hit by the enemies? Now this these first bits are no reasonably nice is this final bit if you're trying to do this final bit quickly you will just casually get hit there whilst waiting for those to despawn well not despawn turn off and it, it is not unknown to runners to die here so if I die here I apologize but sometimes you can line them up yep I died but I do come back with full health So, these first bits you want to set up infinite bungee as always. And then with that final bit, because I went too high, infinite bungee got uh, deactivated. I took damage there because you can pull back on this quite strong. And then for this final bit, you just wanted to. It's 50% prayer, I think. Like. You can try and practice this, but you just got to pray that on the run, it's, it's feeling nice. So once we hit all those, we win, and we get the hard, arguably hardest bungee in the game. I only died once, and that's because I got hit. So now we're going to do Planktopolis Out of Bounds. The way this is done, I just showed you there, we hop in this box, and then to that little spike there, we're going to hop over, and that's going to reset our double jumps. Don't ask me why, Lazar's top here, then we're going to hop over here. And we're going to accidentally fall down, aren't we? It means we can walk out of bounds, I suppose. I've never actually done this, wow. So we're just going to have to quickly walk back to the bungee. This is going fantastic. So sorry. We'll walk back to the bungee. Because we open the box, we can just do this. So once again, hop over here, hop to the second one. So now we've basically skipped out a massive portion of the level with this outbounce. And then you will come through here to this bit and this and this block and you just clip back inbounds. Normally there's people like try and brute force it and whatnot, but uh, now we're going to do one of the few things we actually do as Patrick, which is ice skating idiot and the hardest and only arena combat challenge we do. It, 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 it's a horrifically hard combat challenge. We'll just go collect this. There is a minor, there's a minor different route we can do, which um, 
saves a few seconds if you get if you it saves about five seconds with one frame but about one frame saves about two three seconds but um i'm old-fashioned so over there is the hardest to reach and we've rooted this in because um in the loan screen if you hit up down x a b a y it glitches the game out and only gives us this jellyfish And that's the hardest, that's the, you saw the words, ultimate arena challenge. But yeah, sorry for getting stuck out of mounds there. So now we're going to be here again, um, but we don't want to be here. We're going to go and pat trick, and then we'll go out of bounds again. So you see, just when I'm jumping, we're going to jump there. Oh, no wait, we're going to jump next to it. Why do we jump again? Basically, we're going to jump, grab a ledge, and go out of bounds. Oh yes, we're going to jump right next to it, the one place where I didn't suggest. And we can't actually jump back, but you jump here, to here from the pot boy. We're now out of bounds, and we get to skip a bit more level. So, we'll just go cartwheel. And I have a little safer setup to where I like going down. Various people like going back and bounds in various places here. So where these blocks are, I then start falling and cartwheeling. Near the end, I jump. And now we're going to constantly jump for our lives. So when you're near the bottom, you can jump and the game think this is how sort of early on I was doing some jumps. So we're now out bounds and or we'll go around the ledge because there is a bounce pad that will bounce your way. And we collect uh this is token. More bounce please. Once we collect it, we can just walk to it. That's a fantastic little out bounce that skips some more of them. And now we're coming to the end portion of the level. This has been a decent Planktopolis for me if it hadn't been for gangs for the death on Bungie and the trying to reload because I got stuck out of that. See so yeah, with this bit here, this looks normal, but there's deadly, deadly spikes. And the spike kickbox is a bit weird. Patrick swing up there, don't know why. So you may sometimes die. There you go. I just want to hit this enemy. And now here we're going to skip a part of the level by getting a nice little damage bash boost. So we'll go get damaged. Ah, I turned around incorrectly. Go get hit by this missile. We'll go bash boost and then we'll go jump, spin. And once we're onto this platform, just, uh, I don't have any order, so I have to do this visually. i wait for that go and hit this button with our guitar. Careful with that axe, Eugene, one could say. And this go open up the final SpongeBob challenge, which has contention with SCDA for the hardest one. Mostly because of the steam. Ah. Now, I sadly, because I messed up, can't do quick cycles, so. I'm going to do the standard cycle to begin with. You can save a few seconds by doing a quick cycle which involves ramping off this. But if you wait till like the steam stop stop blowing, one pair of blade passes, and then it's like, ah. And you go on the second prepare base because it starts blowing again on that first one. This is a, a lot of steam basically. Now remember, it goes yellow, blue, red, so yellow, blue, red. I uh, hear you can make it through in one try, but I don't like it because it's a bit of a fake timing, and the depth perception on this camera is awful. Here, you can actually just, uh, you can just dodge those steams by holding near the back. And now we're to the end of... If some people, if you're doing the quick cycle, this can be a very hard sponge, but if you're doing it normally like me, you lose about 3-4 seconds. 
but you you survive. Your witness, Houston, you shall survive. Ouch! So I got hit by an invisible laser. So now to Plankton's riddle. Uh, there's a trick here found by the old record holder and one of the first people to make a tutorial on what soup called soup spit skip. Um, where we spin double jump and the starter. We can start the wall jumps early. But if you're new, here's a tip. The five manly manliest total points show you where the actual safety buttons are. Never knew that as a kid, you know. I just learned it after a while. Trial and error. But um, again, Chris in his advanced and intermediate tutorial covers what soup skip. What soup in his very old tutorial covers what soup skip. So, what happened there? I don't know. Sometimes wall jumps just don't like me. I'm not going to do soup skip because I haven't. Again, it's it's a few seconds time save for. Wow. It's a, I got a bit too into my experience. A few seconds time save for possibly death. Right, game, please. This isn't this isn't meant to be hard either. This is just. There you go. I want to take out these guys. Uh, it says you have to. It's sort of the game tries saying you have to, you know, put put your sponge bowl on that steam. But it turns out you just hit the wall with it. The AOE from it is enough to activate those. This tutorial has gone a bit awry on Tank Topless, and I apologise. But I hope the basic um, principle is still there. Hit this. Now this is a very old trick. There's loads of nerves up ahead, but I'm not going to spawn them. This saves. This takes a few seconds, but it means that I don't have to deal with nerves. So the, on that platform there, there will be nerves shooting at me, and it's annoying. But here we've got to do the bash boost of justice. So there, so I jumped. I jumped, and then I can just turn around to get the jump. And up there is the final boss of the level. I'm going to be trying to do a trying to do a quick cycle from him where at the beginning I instant guitar and I'm going to see if I can do a quick cycle to show you guys. So he opens his eyes, you guitar, and if you have it upgraded, you can then do a homing shot on him. So he should take three hits. Um So three hits later. And that is Hangtopolis over. Sadly, we can't pause and end this. So now we have to go all the way back to Unraid Depression and do a Sonic Wave guitar challenge now that we have our SpongeBob. So that was playing topless. The quick cycle there was basically. Um, Hit him when you start it, start it up, and then if you're feeling lucky on the second cycle where you only did one guitar, you can try two guitars. And it's a very easy quick cycle. So that's like quick guitar change, it's a ring change, but we're going through levels. And we sort of get to appreciate all of depression that we dodged. And after this, we're going to do another guitar change and a phone the fruit electric change. So with this, I can't really give any tips, there's no real tr tricks we do with this, it's just uh, when practicing, grind this out a few times, try not to hit stuff. But you, you also get to see all the level that we dodge. Go around that guy. Central chamber. And balcony skip, remember talking about that at the beginning. Skips all that entire bit. Yep. And that's uh, Unraid Depression <laughs> Revisit. Nice little, you know, one, one minute ten section. And we also get to see Spongebob's fantastic face. We then go to Oh Blown Baby Hunt. And I do Sonic Wave Guitar Challenge first. I'm weird. So we come over here. 
and for some reason, I'm just gonna show this off. On Robin, this level runs about terrified and like this. So with this one, it's very much the same principle. Go through. There's a bit of a hard turn that we have to do in Lava Room, so this is a kid. Kid, catch me off, but uh, you just grind that a few times, you should be good. Um, what's happened to Chris once, I think, on a PB or World Record attempt? He hit at the end, you can see the enemies literally spawn, they hit the enemy, hit the target, but it didn't count as doing it. It was. We laughed, but I felt so bad for him because he's a lovely guy. Go here. We're going up here. I'm remembering this as we're doing it. And around here is sort of where the annoying turn is. So this bit. Turn. The guitar effect really doesn't help the fact that my I have glasses on and my eyesight really gets hurt by that sometimes when you look at Lara. So you're blind like me. Sorry. Now, try not to hit those lamps, because they will take up your guitar. And we're just coming up to the end of it. Recognise this, it's all the way back in the beginning of level. Doing level backwards. And coming up is the area. Okay, so we don't see the enemy sort of spawning and dropping, but uh, yeah, Chris hit that spinner once. And now we go throwing through electric. This is a very simple challenge. We have to throw the fruit onto the buttons. Now, funny enough, we work until we can actually get to the end bit. Um, but it turns out the developers, oh, actually got hit there. I got hit there, oh my god, I'm not doing well today. I was just playing, trying to play greedy whilst chatting. My knowledge of, my memory of this bit is rubbish. The developers programmed that he had to hit all three buttons uh, bef before a token spawn, so he can't just go to a far bit hit this far button. So, you want to throw it there while those are okay, sort of while they're crossing. And then this bit is this last bit is a bit tight because the men's gonna start despawning. And you just want to quickly tap, you don't want to charge. All in all, that was actually very good um throwing through electric for me. That's depressingly good. Because then I got hit twice there. So with that you just that last bit you want to throw the fruit onto the mill platform when I did, which is when they're crossing. So when you hop over to pick it up, um, they're apart so you don't lose the fruit like I did earlier. Um, on my splits I've shown see their head sponge rule because I do an out of bounds. And now we have 50 tokens. We can now do the drive the knucklehead and Expertron. Chaos ahead. Expect delays. I love some of the names of tokens in this game. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are mere two, uh, two tokens away from the end. This is terrifying. So with this, there are several ways that we can actually fail the level. So, we're going to try not to do that, but it doesn't help that. So if this statue falls, we failed the level. Like so! I just want to show that off. I I, I I really just want to show off how you can fail a level and it, it, it plays, it, it really makes you remember that um, you failed a level man. It, what happened there was I slid on the oil and that basically meant I couldn't get the turbo because there you want to cut across the sand. Sand is like... Right there. And you'll hear that fall behind us. That's one of the many fail conditions this level has. And everything's exploding around us. It's chaos. 
its devastation, and I've managed to die and knock a head Max Bazitron. This tutorial is uh, quite chaotic, I apologise. But I'm just showing you, like, even experienced people like me can fuck up. There you go. And then, if you want... If you want, there's a uh, shortcut you can open, but I'm pretty, we're, we're pretty sure it's not quicker. There's only a couple more fail state areas that we have to go through, though. Which is the good news. One of which is coming up. But I've never actually died to it. It's this lowering statue. And if you just turn through, you're fine. I'm pretty sure if you just drive through, you're fine, but... Warning. They try and catch you off there, but it's too early. Now, once again, like in Samus Drone Wild 1, because if you haven't noticed, we're just doing Samus Drone Wild 1 backwards. Uh, this outer route here is quicker than the inner route. I guess that's a nice little extra. These closing doors up ahead are RNG. So we, I don't know which one it's going to be. It's one free chance. I tell them for them because I think they can close and fail you. This is a very like we're going to we're going to beat you Lev. This level wants to beat you down. Now careful about the tomatoes, about the hot sauce here. Careful about that. And here, you want to go, 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 and you'll see there's a closing door, and you just want turbo. You don't want to close, cause... but now we are basically through with the states with this cut, this corner here. We're now on to, after boosting through this finish bit, the final boss. Because we are now going to turn the tables on Plankton, and now you are going to see why I upgraded to HP. So first of all, we're going to run this way to hit this. Uh, he has three phases. Uh, first phase is fire. This is our. I find this one of the harder phases to dodge his attacks. I find phase three a bit harder. Now after three bouts of fire, he will fire a laser at us that we are going to reflect off these tables. So, I find the, um, so we, after you turn all the tables you want to hide behind that, laser reflects off tabs and, you know, it, uh, it hits him. Now after you do it the first time, because first time you get put in a bit of a weird position, I f find it easier to do this way. If you get hit, it will reset the cycle, so you will have to do redo all his flame attacks again. As, as I say that, I get hit. So, he's going to do all his flame attacks again. Now, there is somewhere you can just go and hide. I'm just going to wait here for a bit. I got a bit greedy, so if that does happen that you hit all the tables, you can just stand them here. And for the first two phase, phases, um, it'll be fine. So you can do what I do, sort of chat, have a cup of tea. Appreciate SpongeBob's get up. But yes, uh, with a great guitar, it should only take two hits a phase. So now it comes to, I think, personally, the easiest phase once you know it. And then, because this one you can just cheese by running to one end. And it also only takes, he only does it twice. There you go. They have. Well, I think they predicted being bad like me and getting hit a lot. But like, this game does have some, some, oh some care and dedication to it, but uh, again we can just cheese him by I want to shoot back here oh my god I just made it 
I think he just means good luck on the tutorial because also if anyone knows me I infamously do horrifically on Neptune that was a very nice phase 2 now phase 3 we go get best music we also go get spitters this is why I upgraded spin um, this might be placebo but I think it has oh got hit sadly I think placebo I think the spin upgrade spin has slightly better range but uh it uh, also means that uh, we can reflect the spitter's shots at them. Like that. And it just makes life so much easier. Now, I want to get these spitters down to one hit e each. And on this one... No, 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 no! Basically, what can get happen is what can happen is you can get hit there, and you, that's happened to me so many times in a PB. It's not funny. So during the cutscene of him of those all going about, you get spitted, as I call it. But some people upgrade bash to get the spitters. I upgrade spin. Yep, I slipped off. So yep, and then we want to very quickly do this because they will shoot at you. But that's happened way too many times for me to be even. That I thought I could jump it, but um, sometimes it's just better to take it. Again, we just want to jump, jump, spin. Take that spit up. Let's bash him a few times. This is me playing with fire. But, and then on the final hit on Neptune, you stop your timer. So you stop your timer about now. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all ages, I apologise for that terrible ending, but that is the SpongeBob SquarePants tutorial. Any percent beginner tutorial, SpongeBob SquarePants, SpongeBob SquarePants the movie. Insert any percent speed run the beginner tutorial. If you want any intermediate stuff, um, the community has made various videos on this. And that was a terrible Neptune Manix. I, I did, and I just also glad that Neptune actually happened because it proves that you can slide off. But that is a tutorial. I've been promising to make a tutorial for a few months now. I hope that was okay. Um, people who came in at various points, was that okay? Did I explain stuff that I could? Or was that just terrible? Anyway, I'm now going to make myself, an, I'm now going to get another cup of tea because I deserve one. And yeah, I'm going to have to clip this video now. I'll see you guys.